everyone. I wanted to talk to you today about retirement. And no, I'm not blessed enough yet to be retired, but I plan on it one day. And I actually have been very fortunate at different periods of my life to have not worked. I also got my mom's input on this. So I have eight tips for you today. Four are very practical, and then four are more about how to handle retirement. So the first four could be good at any stage of your life, but I think especially as you age, which is usually when retirement happens. The first one I've actually done a video on, and that is making sure your finances are prepared. I'll put a link to the video. It is about making sure you have a will, a living will, your life insurance, and making sure your partner and your children are aware of your wishes so that if anything happens, there is no complications and no problems because that's a difficult enough time to deal with and hopefully it'll go smoothly. The second thing is go to your appointments together. And not only is this practical that you go to your doctor and your dentist, but it's always good to have a second set of ears there to hear what the doctor has to say so that they aren't hearing it through you and you might forget or change some of the details. But they could also ask some questions that could be relevant that you might not think of, of allergies or all different things. It's very smart to go to those things together and you can both be aware. The third is also a practical one of telling each other if you aren't feeling well. If anything goes wrong, this is so imperative that your partner know what to tell the EMTs, the hospital, the doctors of what you've been experiencing. I think so often we try to not complain and be stoic and if something happens that isn't the best thing. So hopefully you can keep each other aware of what you're experiencing as well as your medications. That's very important for them to know as well. And then the fourth practical tip is something that I actually am always on mark about and that's that I need to learn the blue jobs. I don't barbecue, that's a blue job, but I wanna know how to use the barbecue. I do fill up my own gas tank, but if you don't, even if he fills up the gas tank, make sure you know how to do it, know how to do the banking, know how to do the fireplace. As many blue jobs as there are, know how to do those. So when your partner passes, it is an extremely difficult time and I've been through it, the more that you can grieve and the less that you have to actually have to be focused on practical things it can help you through it because those practical things your brain just isn't there for at the time now getting to the fun stuff have hobbies together and alone you may have to help your partner with this i know someone who was retired and when her husband retired he'd be like what are we going to do today and she's like we I am going grocery shopping and he said, oh, I'll go with you and I'll go with you. And he was like a little puppy dog in her shadow and she loved him dearly, but she had to get him into his own hobbies. So if you are not yet retired, this is something you might want to start thinking about beforehand to help him cultivate hobbies, especially for men. Their lives can be so much of their work and their socialness. They need more socialness than just you when they retire. So if they have something like golfing, great. Mark doesn't golf, but he has so many other hobbies. I am concerned about him having social though. Even though he thinks he doesn't need it, he does. And he doesn't have a lot of other social outlets other than his work. I have some ideas in mind for him that I will help him with. But make sure that you think of how you can make this easy for yourself so your partner isn't your little shadow and how you can make it easy for your partner. I think doing things together is great. You could join clubs for wine tastings. I actually have a whole video on different things that you can do of joining a club and that should help give you some ideas as well. But think back to childhood. What did you enjoy doing when you were younger? If you enjoyed painting or cameras, maybe you want to take classes on that. There's all, the whole world is your oyster right now. There's all kinds of things that you can get into. And like I said, I think it's important that you do things together and alone. And don't forget volunteering. That is always fabulous. If you love animals, go to a shelter. There's just so many opportunities that are available out there. Number six is time alone. Time alone can be a treat. And that can be a challenge if your partner doesn't understand it or if they take it personally. Mark and I are very independent and I don't think that'll be an issue for us. I love to read. I have all kinds of things that I enjoy doing alone and thankfully he can entertain himself. But make sure you have that time alone because I think that when you're both living under the same roof and neither one of you are working, it can make for close quarters. So if you set the expectation that you have time alone 
whether that is you know a coffee by yourself or time for you to read or whatever it really helps to recharge your batteries number seven is have routine along with spontaneity so you might say every whatever night is book club and that you're volunteering on this day and he has his certain things and then you can have things together and then you can have just spontaneity of hey you know we got invited to this and I think it's good to have a mix and the routine is important because your work was your routine and you've lost that and you now need something that you wake up for and you know the pattern of on a regular basis because otherwise even though it sounds amazing to have unending days waiting ahead of you with nothing structured I don't think that that is good. I think you need to have some type of structure. And honestly, I think it's easier for women to fill that than men. So be aware that you might have to help him with that as well. And then finally, you can make fun little routines around the house by changing up where you do things normally. So maybe have coffee on the deck, have dinner in the living room. Uh, you know, just do something different occasionally and it can make it a lot of fun, you know, if you aren't used to going for a walk or a bike ride, just have those little spontaneity and switching things up and it can make it kind of like a little event with the different scenery. I hope that these tips were helpful and I always love hearing from you. So please share below and thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate it and hope you have an amazing day. We'll talk to you next time.